You're about to start the journey of a lifetime, your retirement. Do you have your road map? Whether it's the old fashioned, impossible to fold kind of a map or the GPS app on your phone, you need a good plan and the right strategy if you want to be successful on your retirement journey. I'm Wes Wood, the income guy and founder and president of Wood Financial Group. And for nearly 20 years, I've specialized in helping hardworking Tennesseans just like you reach their retirement goals through income-based financial strategies. And if you're looking for the right solutions to achieve your own financial goals, look no further. Just reach out to me at retiretv.com or by calling 855-776-0614 during today's show or at any time. Today, we're talking about your retirement roadmap. You know, maps have changed to the digital age, just like about everything else, but their basic purpose remains the same. If you're going somewhere new, you better have a map. And in many ways, retirement is the ultimate destination and you'll need the right roadmap to get you there in the most efficient and least stressful way possible. And today, we're gonna to talk about how to create your retirement roadmap that gives you the accuracy to get to your destination properly, gets you there with minimum stress and maximum efficiency, and helps you tackle or avoid some of the major challenges along the way. And again, joining us on today's show is David Scranton. He's been investing for income and income specialist for with over 30 years in the business. He's also a best-selling author and a TV host. But first, let's talk about using your retirement roadmap to make sure you're going to the right place. You know, in business, a roadmap is defined as a strategic plan that defines a goal or a desired outcome and includes the majority of steps or major milestones needed to reach that goal. The same definition should apply to your retirement roadmap. Now some of the key terms are strategic and goal and when you're talking about a road trip or using a literal roadmap, your goal of course is your destination. Let's say for example that you want to go to 321 North 7th Street in downtown Nashville. In that case, you might start by typing the address into your GPS app on your phone. You wouldn't have just typed Nashville. You need to be specific. And the same idea should apply to your roadmap for your retirement. It should also include a specific destination. In other words, your personal retirement goals. And if those goals include, say, downsizing, moving somewhere else, perhaps with lower taxes, then that's great. But the sooner that you can pinpoint exactly where you want to be and where you want to move, the sooner you can orient that retirement roadmap to meet that specific goal. Now, let's focus on that word strategic. Usually, there's more than one way to get from point A to point B to achieve any goal. Take that trip to 321 North 7th Street in downtown Nashville. Google Maps would probably give you several options to get there. One of them may be longer and, and then, uh, then another way to get there in terms of mileage, but it might require less travel time. And ultimately, the route you choose depends on a variety of factors. For instance, do you have a, do you have a time limit of getting there? Is getting there quickly your main priority? Or do you want a scenic, stress-free drive? The point is, is it's important not only to have a strategy, but one that's right for you. The same principle applies to your retirement roadmap. And identifying your destination, your specific goals is a great start, but which strategy is, best, is the best option for getting there? As with Google Maps, the answer will depend on several factors. Things like, how much have you saved in retirement? What does your current financial plan look like? When do you plan on retiring? How's your health? What's your number one priority? And that last question is probably the most important one when it comes to choosing the right route or strategy. For example, is your top priority to have enough money to make a major purchase when you retire? Or is your strategy to leave a large inheritance for your children? Or is your number one priority to have a reliable income that you cannot outlive? And if you're like most people, the answer is number three. That's why a strategy geared towards retirement income in my experience, is the best option and makes the most sense for most people. And you can learn more by reaching out to me directly. Visit RetireTV.com or by calling me at 855-776-0614 and we'll send you a free retirement income kit. 
But right now, let's welcome David Scranton. He's the founder of Sound Income Strategies and the founder of the Retirement Income Store. Dave, thanks for being back on my show this week. Great to be here with you as usual. So, okay, let's start with the beginning then, right? I mean, when you say take an assessment of where I am today, there are some things that I could easily forget to include. So, so give me a brief checklist of the things I need to be considering so I don't miss anything. Yeah, well, you know, you obviously got to look at uh, where you are financially. Um, so, you know, how much in investments do you have? How much income are you going to have coming in from things like Social Security or if you're blessed enough to still receive some sort of pension? Do you have some maybe debt? Uh, is there some debt that you need to clean up? So, by listing those things, now you can look at them on a, on a piece of paper and determine perhaps some areas that need to be kind of looked at or taken care of or at least just make a general assessment. Uh, but also is the fun stuff, which is thinking about perhaps what you want to be doing in retirement and setting goals um, and, and actually taking the time and doing the fun conversation perhaps with your spouse and think about, hey, do you want to be traveling? Maybe spending more time with grandchildren or uh, perhaps buying another home, maybe a vacation home. And then by looking at those goals and assessing where you are financially now, then you can start building that roadmap to ensure that you're going to have the retirement that you want to have. But if I've never retired, gosh, I might not know what I want in retirement. So, you know, if I'm a person who says, gee, I'm not that creative, you know, what, you know, what would you recommend in terms of making sure that I have a clear vision of what I want that's going to drive me toward that goal? Well, you know, there's uh, a lot of different goals people have. Some people have goals where they want to purchase things, they have goals. Some people have goals that they want to do and become. And what I've seen is that most folks that are younger, uh, if they want to buy a car, they can, you know, put a, a picture of that car and they can save up enough money one day to achieve that goal to purchase it. But the do and become goals for folks that are perhaps older, that's where most people's goals land. So perhaps it's more things that you want to do, you want to become. Um, but it, maybe you're not that visual, maybe you're not that good of a goal setter when it comes to that stance. So another way is just to look at kind of where you are right now financially as far as how much income you have and then look at some of those expenses that you have now that you're no longer going to have in retirement and then you can determine how much income you're going to need to have net after those expenses. We call it the top-down approach and then you can kind of see where you are as far as how much money you have to generate that type of income in retirement as well as from other sources like Social Security. Uh, but Dave, thanks for joining us, and, and don't go away. We're going to talk a lot more later in the show. But coming up after the break, we'll talk more about ways that you can take the stress out of your retirement using investing for income. I'm Wes Wood, and you're watching the Retirement Income Show, and we'll be right back. fiduciary is someone legally obligated to act in your best interest. Doctors, lawyers, and some financial advisors are fiduciaries, but not all. When you work with Wes Wood and his team at Wood Financial Group, you are working with fiduciaries. They help clients create customized investment portfolios based off their retirement goals. If you're ready to work with a fiduciary, visit RetireTV.com and schedule a free, no obligation conversation with Wes or a Wood Financial Group advisor. I'm David Scranton. During my career, I found that most baby boomers have done a great job growing their retirement savings, yet many don't know how to convert their savings into steady income. And that is why I built the Retirement Income Store, to help hardworking Americans preserve their assets and establish steady streams of income. If you're 55 or older, please claim our free Retirement Income Kit, chock full of information you need to know to get steady income during your retirement. Call 866-714-7377 online at theretirementincomestore.com. Welcome back. I'm Wes Wood, The Income Guy, and today we're talking about your retirement roadmap. Glad you could join us. So far we talked about orienting your map to your destination, meaning you need to make sure your map is pointing you in the direction of your goals. 
Now, let's talk about priorities. If your number one priority when traveling is to get to where you want to go quickly, you might be willing to, to, take, to have more stress to achieve that goal. For instance, you, you might be willing to take a strategy that requires you to merge into busy freeways and navigate some tricky shortcuts. But if your top priority is to have a stress-free drive, even if it means a longer road trip, you're probably going to pick a different route. You're probably going to pick one that is a little quieter, perhaps scenic routes wherever possible, through little towns and perhaps villages where you might even be able to stop and do some antiquing or grab a bite at a local diner. The point is, your priorities play a big role in determining your strategy. As we've already seen, the same idea applies to retirement roadmap. If you're like most people, your top priority is to have a reliable income to achieve your goals. In that case, doesn't a strategy geared towards retirement income make most sense? And in my experience, that answer is definitely heck yeah. Uh, and if you want to learn more about a strategy that will help you generate income in retirement, contact me directly or on my website, retiretv.com, or by calling 855-776-0614. And remember to ask for your free retirement income kit, and we'll help you get started. Earlier, I said that the purpose of a roadmap isn't just to get you to your destination. It's to get you there with maximum efficiency and minimum stress. That's true regardless of your priority. Take that driver whose top priority is to get there quickly. He doesn't want a lot of stress, he's just willing to, to put up with more stress based on his priorities. The same idea applies to your retirement. Goals that are growth-based rather than income-based. You don't want all the stress when it comes when investing for growth in common stocks and stock mutual funds, but you're willing to put up with it because that's a strategy that's aligned with your goals and in your priorities. But the opposite is typically true when the goals are income-based. When you're investing for a reliable income return, your emphasis is on the word reliable. You want to bear minimum stress and worry, therefore you want a strategy designed to generate income while also protecting your principal. A strategy that protects it from risk of spin down, from things like big losses in the stock market that the growth-based portfolio can suffer when the market does tank. An income-based strategy helps you achieve all that and minimize stress. That's because the bond and bond-like instruments that are typically an income portfolio are contractual investments. You have a contract that protects the par value of your principal and guarantees your income at a fixed rate of interest or dividends. Here's another way to think about it. When you buy a growth stock, you've got to do three things right in order for that purchase to pay off. You have to buy the stock correctly, it has to go up in value, and then you have to sell it correctly when it's up in value. By comparison, when you buy an individual bond or bond-like instrument, you only have to do the first thing, buy it correctly. And if you do, ideally with the help of the right financial advisor, your investment will pay off. And you'll have a contract assuring you that it will. And if you want to learn more about investing for bonds and bond-like instruments, visit my website at retiretv.com to get your free retirement income kit. You can also call me at 855-776-0614. But now, let's welcome back David Scranton. So Wes, let me throw a couple scenarios at you here. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, let's say that I feel like I'm behind the eight ball when it comes to retirement. I don't wanna postpone retirement unless I really have to, but I've gotta make up for lost time. What are my yeah, best options but... in that case? Well, in that case, then maybe it is somebody that has to roll the dice and do more growth and take the risk, kind of like the, the risk of trying to get to a destination much quicker. Um, you have to merge into those busy intersections, take a lot more risk like you would driving. Um, same is true when it comes to investing. If somebody feels like they're way behind the eight ball, well, they may have to take on more risk, but of course with more risk could reward them, but also could put them even further behind the eight ball. Uh, but yeah, that could be a scenario where they need to stick, stick it out a little bit more in growth for a few more years, or perhaps just delay retirement to make sure they'll be okay. Okay, so what if I am just a little bit behind the eight ball, and I tell you, you know, I'm okay delaying retirement if it means I can have the lifestyle I want. In that case, you know, what are some of the options I might consider then? Yeah, so instead of that first scenario you brought up, where they need to perhaps be in more growth and take on more risk, 
well then it's, it's not about that anymore. Perhaps invest more in like dividend stock portfolios. So we know that the, the dividend is, is fairly fixed and it's a reliable stream of income and uh, it's gonna minimize some volatility and, and help them perhaps achieve their, their goal in a much steadier form and fashion than it is taking a bunch of growth and potentially losing a ton of money in the stock market. Sure, yep. in best case scenario. I can afford to retire, but I enjoy my job. I don't want to retire. Then what do I do? Yeah, and, and fortunately, we see a lot of people that are in this situation after analyzing their current uh, financial predicament. And in that scenario, well, now they can really be much less aggressive and perhaps go into more like individual bonds and bond-like instruments and get that steady stream of, of interest and dividends. and. They could be more of a capitalist for when the market does dip. Well, now they can you know, take advantage of those dips and have even more money when they retire. But that's definitely the best case scenario because they're already probably where they need to be. It's like they're winning the ball game of life. They've got enough points to win the game. They don't need to continue to try to run up the scoreboard anymore. You know, it's a lot like, like I've talked in previous shows about the Tennessee Titans. You know, if the Titans are, let's just say in the Super Bowl, hopefully one of these days, and they're ahead by a couple of touchdowns with a minute to go in the game, and we've got the ball, we've got enough points to win this thing and to achieve our final goal, which is to win the championship. We don't have to try to run up the scoreboard anymore because if we do try to run up the scoreboard and take a lot of risk, like investing in growth, well, we could fumble the ball and, and give it over to, to the other team that could easily then strip the game from us. So we can just play good defense and be more conservative. And that's a great place to be. And that's where a lot of people are when they're in retirement or really, really close to it. And they enjoy their job and they can just dial back the risk and invest in things that are much more conservative, like those bond to bond like instruments. Great question. It sounds like no matter which of those three scenarios I'm in, it sounds like Westwood has a solution for me to help me get closer to my goals. Yep, that, that's right. There is uh, plenty of solutions out there for all types of individual situations. It's just a matter of uh, making sure that you're getting good advice and working with somebody that understands folks that are in retirement. But hey, thanks, Dave. And we're going to talk a little bit more later in the show. But coming up after the break, we're going to discuss how income can help you tackle many of the unique challenges in retirement. I'm Wes Wood, and you're watching the Retirement Income Show. We'll be right back. Retirement accounts like 401ks and IRAs are great tools to save for retirement. They offer tax advantages to help keep more money in your pocket. But withdrawing money from your accounts can have a huge impact on your tax liability. Take money from the right account at the right time and you could minimize it. But taking money from the wrong account at the wrong time could result in a big tax burden. If you're not sure what you should do with your 401k in retirement, visit retiretv.com to schedule a free, no obligation conversation with Wes Wood and Wood Financial Group. Welcome back, I'm Wes Wood, The Income Guy. Thanks for joining me. So far, we've talked about orienting your retirement roadmap to your goals and your priorities. Now, let's talk about how to make sure it's a roadmap that prepares you for what lies ahead. We know when traveling, you want a roadmap that helps you avoid situations like this. Construction projects, traffic jams, detours. They can crop up on us again and again on a long road trip. Sometimes there's just no way we can anticipate them or avoid them. But when these challenges are based on permanent issues on our route, then your roadmap can help you prepare to avoid them altogether. Once again, the same concept applies to your retirement roadmap. When it comes to retirement, there are certain challenges and obstacles you can be sure to account you'll encounter along the way. A roadmap geared towards retirement income gives you strategies that you need to deal with with these challenges or just to avoid these challenges altogether. For example, a bad roadmap might overlook longevity, meaning the simple fact that your retirement trip may end up lasting longer than you expect. You might think you have a good plan now, 
But if it's only designed for 20 years re of reliable retirement income and you end up living 30 years, well, you know that's a problem. There's also an increased risk of spending down your principal, which I mentioned earlier. The fact is, spending any principal during retirement is a slippery slope. Unfortunately, it's also one of the most common mistakes retirees make. The longer you live, the greater this risk becomes if you don't have a right strategy to avoid it. Your retirement roadmap also needs to address inflation. Many people don't realize inflation impacts retirees much harder than the general population. Uh, they typically underestimate its financial impact. The situation gets even worse when you factor in healthcare inflation. Healthcare inflation increases at even a faster and steeper rate than typical inflation. Healthcare increases as you age and very often so do your insurance premiums. All these factors combined make healthcare costs one of the biggest potential challenges you face on your retirement roadmap. Social Security is another challenge everyone needs to deal with eventually. It may seem odd to call Social Security a challenge since it's a guaranteed source of retirement income, but making the right decisions on how you can take your benefits can be challenging, and it's so important to get it right. The difference between maybe the first option when taking Social Security versus the second best option can amount to hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of your lifetime. Now the right advisor, meaning one that specializes in income, can help you make sure to maximize benefits in every possible way. They can also help you make sure that your asset allocation is properly aligned with Social Security strategy. That's a real key to tackling this particular challenge. You need to, if you need help getting started on your own retirement roadmap, reach out to me directly by visiting RetireTV.com or by calling 855-776-0614. But now, let's welcome back income specialist and the founder of the Retirement Income Store, David Scranton. Hey, Dave. Hey, Wes. So, okay, I could hear the naysayers thinking, all right, if I retire in my middle late 60s or even better at age 70, why can't I spend down even a little bit of principal? I mean, how, how bad could that be? Yeah, Dave, spending principal in retirement can be a real slippery slope, like I mentioned early in the program. Um, because if you think about it, it, retirement can last as long as 20, 30 years in some cases. So if we start spending principal, especially in the early years, it can have a detrimental impact later on life, like running out of money, which no retiree, retiree wants to go through. You know, think about it this way, like a 30-year mortgage, right? you pay the same payment every single month on that 30-year mortgage. Well, the first few years, it's like all interest with just a little bit of principal. But towards the end of that 30-year mortgage, now you're paying the exact same payment, but it's all principal with just a little bit of interest at the end. Well, think about that in reverse. You got this big pile of money. In the first few years in retirement, you're taking a lot of interest with just a little bit of principal. But towards the end, you're still taking perhaps the same amount of money out every single month like you were in the first few years, but now it's all principal with just a little bit of interest, therefore running out of money. So if we can make sure that we're not deleting principal or spending principal in the early years, we can be much more successful about not running out of money in retirement. Good question. And it makes sense. So it's just not worth the risk, essentially. But I know you also say that you know, bonds and bond-like instruments can, you know, potentially give you an inflation hedge later in life. And that goes against the thinking probably of a lot of your more informed viewers who say, well, if I want inflation hedge, I've got to be in the stock market. So how does that work engineering an inflation hedge out of bonds and bond-like instruments? Yeah, well, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're not spending all your interest in dividends, for instance, from those bond and bond-like instruments, well, especially in the early years of retirement, you can just take those interest and dividends and buy more bonds and bond-like instruments to give you more income later on in life, therefore being just a nice organic way to uh, be an inflation hedge to give you much more income later on. Um, the old analogy is, you know, imagine your, your portfolio being a bunch of chickens. If you're only spending the eggs, you're only eating the eggs that those chickens are producing, interest and dividends, then you'll be in great shape. Therefore, you'll still have all those chickens later on in life to spend when it's okay to maybe spend down principal when inflation is caught up in your 80s or 90s. But if we start eating those chickens early, well, 
over time, what's going to happen? We're going to end up eating our chickens and eggs, so we don't want to touch the principal. And we can use those bond and bond like instruments by just spending the interest and dividends or a portion of the interest and dividends early in retirement, therefore giving us a lot more income and principal down the road that then we can deplete for inflation hedges. Great. And and you talk about chicken and eggs. Well, one of the biggest eggs in most people's retirement portfolio are the Social Security payments that yep. they get on a regular basis. And that doesn't even need a, a chicken, per se, to, 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 to give you the eggs. So mm -hmm. you've got this software in your office, though, that really helps people determine how to maximize their benefits that they're, 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 they're legally able to get. Tell us about that. Yeah, we spent thousands of dollars on this software and it's and it's a very good investment for us and our clients. And you know, the first option from taking social security for some folks versus the second could be hundreds of thousands of dollars in benefits over the course of the lifetime. So we want to get this thing right, and that's exactly what this software will do for our clients by putting their situation into it and being able to run it correctly. But hey Dave, thanks for joining us again on another episode of the Retirement Income Show. And thank you for watching. I'm Wes Wood, the Income Guy. And if you have any questions about anything we've covered on today's show, please reach out to me at retiretv.com or by calling 855-776-0614. We'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Wesley Wood, host of the Retirement Income Show, and I'm founder and president of Wood Financial Group. And we're a local independent financial services company that specializes in creating custom retirement solutions tailored to meet your particular needs. Visit retiretv.com to learn how we can help you create a customized retirement portfolio.